should have been recording from the start there. Sorry about that. Okay, so that's the BIOS one. So we've gone over that. That should be in your notes. If it's not in your notes, you'd write in your notes so you have it for your notes on the test. And like I said before, notepad should be a hardware only notepad. Really want it to be a smaller uh, uh, steno sized notepad like this. That's what we're supposed to have in our class, okay? Okay, system BIOS is stored in, is it stored in RAM? Is BIOS part of RAM? Is BIOS stored in RAM? No. No, why would it be a terrible thing to put BIOS in RAM? Because it, 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 lost. it would be lost if we took out the battery. battery. If you took out the battery, BIOS would be lost, your motherboard would be worthless forever, okay? If BIOS gets screwed up on our motherboard, it is a piece of trash. It's a square frisbee that would really hurt to catch. Okay, so you would never want the BIOS, the program, the basic input-output program. You would never want that stored in RAM because if I unplugged it or took out the battery, it would be lost and we would be hosed. Okay, is it stored in CMOS? Eh. Okay, if you put that down, theoretically, I would say you get kind of partial credit. It's not in CMOS. Okay. It's in CMOS something. It's in something in particular. Is that is BIOS stored in BIOS? No, that's a silly question. The last one is correct. It's in ROM. Okay, and specifically, it's in ROM. It's in read-only memory, so it can't be lost when the power goes out. It's stored there permanently. Okay, but technically, the most correct answer would be it's stored in CMOS ROM, right? But it's stored in ROM. It's on a ROM chip. Okay, and usually when we talk about CMOS, we're talking about CMOS RAM. Which is what's stored in CMOS RAM? What? That is part of it. What, what do I say when I have a good way to remember the C, which is not what it stands for, but what I like to, is my memory A, okay? C for configuration, okay? The BIOS configuration is stored in CMOS RAM, and, and that's not what C stands for in that acronym, but I like to remember is configuration, okay? My s configuration data, my boot order, my devices uh, that are on my PC, the time and date, all that configuration stuff is stored in CMOS RAM, which is not one of the questions on this one, but it definitely 100% without question will be on your test. Okay? So the BIOS program is stored in ROM, the BIOS data, the things that we enter or that it finds when it does the power on safe test are stored in CMOS RAM. Okay, Linux. Microsoft Windows, I don't know how anybody got this wrong. Anyway, Linux, Microsoft Windows, and Mac OS X are all operating systems. In order for a computer to be useful, it must have one of these running off of a permanent or secondary storage device. Okay, without question, it's true. If it was on a primary storage device, what happens to primary storage when you remove power? It's gone, right? Straight, remember primary storage is RAM and cache memory. Secondary storage or permanent storage is hard drives, CD-ROMs, flash drives, all those things. The OS has to be on one of those, yes. All right, Ian thinks this, this isn't true, but... Um, what? Why I had to point it out. What? Are we just yeah. talking about computers or just computers that are like all computers? All computers. Really? Not even like a camera? Well, a camera or a computer. I mean, it kind of is. Yeah. You don't think it's almost, right? You don't think your phone has a hard drive? Yes, it cer certainly does, and it's called secondary storage. Okay, but that, I didn't ask about all devices. I asked about Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Okay, and on computers, but the answer is yes. It has to be on a secondary storage device, or it will be gone. By the definition of what secondary and primary storage is, primary storage is always volatile. It always goes away when the power is removed. And if your operating system wasn't on that for your phone for your camera, for whatever. There is a hard drive. There is a little piece of flash memory on there, just like there are on our, on our old cheap tablets that we had. There was a little tiny flash memory card that would get corrupted, but that's what stored the operating system. It's always in a permanent storage, or it would be gone. I read the question, like I said, do you need a operating system to work on the computer? That's not what it says. Yeah. In order for a computer to be used, it must have one of these, one of these, running off of permanent or secondary storage. Yes, in order for it to use, you have to have an operating system. Okay, because what would you do with a computer without an operating system? 
it would not be useful. I know it's not being, I, I'm giving those as examples of operating systems, but this doesn't even have to be part of the sentence for it to be true or false, right? All this says is Linux, and these are operating systems. Okay, is that true? Are these operating, yes. Okay, so if that, whenever I do a true false, I can go through and I can, and you, this is testmanship, by the way. Whenever I do a true false, if the first part of it's true, I can just line it out and say that has nothing to do with this question anymore. Because I'm looking for something on a true-false question that makes it false. Okay, so you, on a true-false, you say the answer is true unless otherwise determined by any sentence in there. Because one false sentence in a true-false makes the answer false. Okay, so in order for a computer to be useful, it must have one of these running off of a permanent secondary. In other words, an oper operating system, and that's true. You have to have one. And I'm specifically talking about a computer. But your question goes to other devices. Yes, they have to have some kind of operating system. Obviously, it doesn't have to have Windows. It can have the Android operating system, right? Yeah. Running off of it. But it has to have an operating system. So the answer to that is true. You'll get it right the next time. Yeah. Okay. By the way, on these retakes, it's not the highest grade. It's always the last grade okay, that you took. Okay, if you just start your PC and almost immediately hear a series of beep, what do you think it might be? Now, this is the part of the post stuff. And uh, here we'll go and we'll look up this one. And you read an article on what, what those beat codes are, if you remember, a while back. But the most common series of beeps that we might get that generally don't go away and will annoy us forever. This one's starting up, obviously, and we can hear it beeping at us. Buzzing in this case because the speaker's not very good. But. Okay, so it depends on what's wrong, but almost never do we get a beep from a bad hard drive. Most of the time when we have a bad hard drive, we get nothing, or in the case of these Dells, you get a light code up front. In the case of these Dells, this flash is yellow for bad power. Okay. And even though I plugged it, it's still flashing because there's memory in the hard drive, or on the motherboard. Or I mean, there's power still on the motherboard. So usually we get a beat for that. We usually get nothing for that. We usually get nothing for that other than a, a, some kind of symbol on the screen. Of course, Isaac's not watching, so he doesn't know what I'm pointing at. So as I'm pointing, he's like, oh, maybe I should look. Yeah, okay. So that's usually a sound. That's usually nothing at all. You won't know you have a better CD-ROM until you try to use your CD-ROM. There's no indication usually. Bad hard drive, we if it's the operating system hard drive, I will show you what happens if a hard drive just goes away. And I have to put some memory back in. Okay. If the hard drive goes away, which you may not be able to see. And by the way, these all these lighting up numbers mean something as part of the post test. Okay? So they'll stop where they fail on the post test if you were to look it up in the user manual. But in this case, my indication for a bad hard drive actually could be the same indication for a bad CD-ROM if it was completely unplugged like I just did. But it comes up and BIOS says, hey, drive zero is not found. And it's supposed to be a serial ATA connection on AC, SATA zero, which you'll learn what that means, but it, it's missing. Drive two is also not, I unplugged them both. Drive two is also not found. So my indication on that, there, it can't boot because I unplugged the operating system, but BIOS is saying something changed. On top of that, it also is telling me, hey, the amount of memory has also changed. Something else happened. So it's a, 
alerting to me to the fact that something changed since the last boot, so the configuration data does not match the previous configuration data. Okay, so there is an indication of a bad hard drive if it's gone completely. You would not get that if it was just a failing hard drive. It'd go ahead and try to boot up because BIOS found the hard drive. In this case, the BIOS didn't find the hard drive. Okay, so series of beeps is almost always memory, almost always memory, almost always memory. Okay, somebody will get that on their final exam without question. Okay, uh, and Cody wasn't here for day one, but I'm sure he watched the videos. But final exam in here is everybody will walk in and pull a number out of a hat, and there'll be numbered PCs along the wall there. And you will go get your PC, and you will go get a work order that says something about that PC, and you will have the class period to repair it, bring it over here, and be able to log on to it, and that's when you're done with your exam. Okay? Yeah, it's a two-part grading thing. You get graded for the PC being fixed, and you get graded for your write-up and troubleshooting stuff that you took along the way as well. Okay? So, the person who gets bad memory, if it's a simple bad memory, and they turn it on and beep, and they hear the beeps, and they don't know that, they could spend the whole class trying to figure out what's wrong. And it's happened before on the final exam. And there's invariably three or four other people sitting in the room hitting their forehead going, you just got the easiest test in the room, you idiot. And that person is over there changing out hard drives, changing out cables, changing all kinds of stuff because they forgot way back in chapter two, we learned that the beeping sound is bad memory. And we'll talk about it again on chapter four, but that always happens. Not every year, but I'd say every thir third or fourth year, the person with bad memory waste the entire class when they actually had the easiest test. It was a, uh, I've got bad memory. I'm going to go over here to the parts store, which is what that sign is for over there. In fact, Cody asked about that. Do you guys sell parts? No. At the parts store is where we put all the cart. Oh, that's random. Random. I, like, I oh is it? Maybe. We put a cart full of parts right over there at where it says computer parts store. Parts available for testing with management approval. Today's special all parts plus $10. Okay, really it's 10%. Okay, so if, if Mr. Wellman thinks it's bad memory, and he says, hey, I need to buy some memory for this PC. If he takes memory and uses it in his PC, it costs 10% of his grade if he didn't need it. If he needed it, that's OK. okay? Why? I fixed the PC, Mr. Poole. I found the error eventually. Because if your mechanic puts a new engine in because you need a new muffler, just because you drove it away doesn't mean I'm a good mechanic. right? You just paid $2,000 more than you needed to for a dang muffler. Or Spark plug or whatever, right? So just because it works, that's not the objective. The objective is to make it work right based on what really needs to be repaired. Anyway, off topic there. So beeping's bad memory. Where's my pen? Any questions on that? Kind of went over a lot of things that it could be, OK? Hard drives, you usually get some kind of indication on the screen. CD-ROM, you might get an indication on the screen. Same thing with hard drive. You might get an indication. If it sees the hard drive at all, you won't. It'll just go. And then the operating system might fail. I have a whole stack of hard drives down in the bottom down there. It's just for you. Ones that look like they boot, but then the hard drive's bad, and it won't boot the OS. Somebody will have a bad hard drive. They have to replace the hard drive on their final exam. Somebody will have a bad power supply. And they have to replace the power supply. Because every one of the broken PCs is different. And every one of the broken PCs is one thing. And none of them are hard really hard. Okay, They're all definitely repairable in one period. And some of you guys will go, this was easy. And some of you guys will go, I couldn't figure out what it is, Mr. Poole. Because somebody did something mean, like, here, here, who was a mean one? <coughs> there was nothing wrong with the hard drive whatsoever on one of the tests last year. The, uh, I, don't, I don't break them, by the way. My advanced tech kids do. They, their final exam is to break a PC and make the initial write-up. But what they did was they took and cut the hard drive cable way, way, way down there, so you couldn't even see that it was cut, so it would never connect. And the hard drive was always missing, because the cable was bad. There's nothing wrong with the hard drive. Okay, but there were cables on the table. So eventually, eventually the student found and, and tried, because sometimes it won't boot to the hard drive, so I try a new hard drive. Cables go bad, they do. I, um, in, fast, in fact, Isaac's uh, mom's cable, I don't know, it's probably three years ago, it's the first time I've ever had a cable in a PC just stop working. Where to put down my pen? Walk over there. See, that's what I get for me and Okay, so enough on those 
uh, post things. But that was why you read that post article. Did I just click on the same one? Did I have the same question twice, or did I just click on it twice? I must have just clicked on it twice. I think that's everything that anybody got wrong. I, unfortunately, I don't have. It used to be, I just click right here, and it would order them by most wrong. And uh, I don't have the ability to do that anymore. So that was the that was the most wrong answer. Now that, this obviously is not intended to be every question that's going to be in the test. It's not the question that's going to be on the test. There's no BIOS. There's no um, uh, really other questions about operating systems. She's doing big articles on it right now. But you get the idea of, of kind of the information you need to have in your, in your stuff. And I'm going to go over the ICANNs real fast uh, since this is the last class before the test. Um, and this is based on what you said yesterday, okay, or last class. Can I explain how an OS uses the BIOS information? That was the subject of, of the art or the video, the video, right? That you just got assigned at the end of the writing. And if you haven't watched the video, then you should, because that answers this question. But basically, when it goes through and the BIOS goes through and does the, the self-test and it goes through the post and it finds all this, that information, it hands off that configuration information to the operating system. Um, and that's basically all it does. Once the OS takes over, it's just taking the initial configuration data that it gets from, from um, BIOS, and then it's applying, in, in most cases, its own drivers to make those devices work. In some cases, there are BIOS drivers that it uses, but any more, in most cases, that uses its own set of drivers, okay? Can you explain what a device driver is and does? What it is, we, we talked about this numerous times. It's a small program that makes hard drive work, hard, makes hardware work. And that's really the majority of what you need to know about uh, what a driver is. It's just a small program that makes hardware work. Without that program, there's no interface between the hardware and the software, and it doesn't know how to um, how to talk to that device properly. Okay. Can you explain the boot sequence steps? I'm not even going to go through all that again. That's part, part of the other one. You should have that in your notes. If you cannot, if you're the one person that said no, you need to go through the articles you've already read. You need to go through the quiz again, and you need to make sure that's in your notes uh, because we've exhausted a, a lot of time on that. Can you explain how the ROM BIOS finds the OS? Really? Everybody said no. How does it find the OS? By looking in the... How, do, how, how does ROM BIOS know where to look for the operating system? Who tells it where to look for the operating system? We do. What? We set it up. We do, right? It's just that's just our boot order. How does it find the operating system by going through the boot order that we set and pulling those devices? So we said go to the network first. So it goes to the network. Does, it, does anybody want to boot me? No. Okay. And then it goes to the CD-ROM, and it goes, ah, there's no CD-ROM. So then it goes to the hard drive, and it goes, ah, there's a hard drive, and there's an operating system on the hard drive. That's all, it, that's all it's asking. It pulls the boot order that we set up. And if we set it up with no bootable device, then the PC doesn't boot. It stops at BIOS, and it sits there, and it does nothing, OK? If I go and change the boot order of this PC so that it only boots from the CD-ROM, it's going to go, no boot device available. And the only way to find out what's wrong is to go into BIOS and look at the boot order and go, huh, I only set it to boot from CD-ROM, and yet there's no CD-ROM in it. Hmm. Duh, right? OK, so that's how it finds it, by looking where we told it to look. OK, which is why we need to be able to get into BIOS. Uh, uh, what we take away from this whole chapter is kind of, what is an operating system? What is it for to give us access to our hard drive or our hardware, right? It is our, our graphical user interface. It is what allows us to use this software. It's the big, right? The operating system is the biggest piece of software that allows us to interact with the hardware through our input and output devices. Okay. The last thing I wanted to do, which I'm going to wait, I'm going to I'm going to pause it and let you guys look at your stuff. I wanted to go over one thing on the on the blog post. Um, you guys had some good comments. Hopefully, you, everyone's finished doing comments on everybody else's. 
honestly, I didn't have the forum set up exactly the way we wanted to because I didn't want you to see other people's comments because sometimes somebody would go to it and they would be the last one and they would say, all the comments above I agree with. Well, okay, it's not really what I was looking for, right? But it's already been said, so if you went to that one last, you may not have a lot to say, but it's hard for me to grade you when I just say I concur. Okay, now when it comes to your blog post, there's some things that uh, don't matter as far as your MLA and some things that do. Uh, your title is going to be the title of the blog. You don't have to put another title in there. I don't want the MLA stuff from the paper as far as your name, my name, the date. That stuff doesn't belong on a blog post. Okay, so that doesn't doesn't go there. Doesn't have to be. Um, uh, when you go to new, when you go to a new paragraph in a blog post, it automatically makes a space between the lines. So whether if the tab won't indent, as long as there's a space between the paragraphs, it's easily understood you're on a new paragraph. So I won't take off of that either. Okay. However, what you do need and what nobody put is any, first of all, you've got to have references to something to support your argument. And if you have references to something, then you must have a, we have to have a work cited. You can't make references to other people's work inside your paper without having a work cited. Okay? So everybody needs to have a work cited at the bottom of their blog post. That's 10% that's of your grade, just so you know. You need to immediately drop one letter grade for not having a work cited there. Because that's on my, my rubric when I agree, but, um, which I don't know if I posted, but I will. So somewhere in there you have to have, or you should have, a couple references to something else you read, whether it's what I assigned or what you read on your own, I could care less, okay? And supporting your side, why Linux is better, why Windows is better, whatever your side is, whatever you think on yours. And I did notice some comments that some people said, I couldn't tell which side you were on because in the first paragraph you took one side and the second paragraph you took another side. That's not necessarily wrong. As long as the introduction says this comparative essay between Linux and Windows and whether it would be the best to implement at a K-12 school system. You don't have to use that sentence, obviously, I'm just saying. Uh, and you can have paragraph one on, on Linux and paragraph two on Windows, but the final paragraph has to be clear what your recommendation is. Okay? You, in one essay, you can take both sides as long as at the end of the essay you took a side, because you can say, here's why people think Windows is better, here's why people think Linux is better, here's why I think Linux is better, you know, when you, when you, when you think. So you should have, a, have a, a couple things to back up your side in your paper, and if you've got things to back up your side, you must therefore have at least those things. You have to list every article I gave you. I'm not saying there needs to be seven entries in your MLA or in your work cited. If you reference two, then there should be two entries. Okay. Uh, if if you used one a lot, you might want to include that even if you don't have a quote. But there's no number of entries in your work side of that. Okay. So you guys, every, is everyone finished reviewing everybody else's things? Everybody's done that already. Okay. So you should have some some hopefully some quality inputs on yours. And what I just said. Didn't get a lot of that on there. There was no work cited, that kind of stuff, but there should be on your final blog post, okay? So by Tuesday, before class, while you're doing your test, I'm going to be grading your papers on your blog. So your blog should be done. Is everybody getting in there? And no problems getting into your blog to make your post. Remember, you have to publish it when you're done, okay? And we did that the other day in class, and if you weren't here or how to get in, I can show you how to do that. Again. The blog? What? Where's the blog? You what? I don't know when the blog is. Were you not here? Yeah. Okay, so if you just type blog.nationaltrail.us, you get to our blog site, which is really called WordPress, but whatever. Uh, that's the system that runs it. And then you go down to ours, which is NTIT Tech, and you get logged in, and you'd be able to see your, your stuff. It's just your username and password should get you logged in. Okay, I'm going to stop recording. I need to post the uh, rubric for, for this uh, paper, which I have not done. Um, I'm 90% sure I have a rubric already made. And you guys need to finish the paper and then go through those articles again while you're, while you're rewriting the paper. If you don't have notes, if you don't have notes from everything we've read, uh, and talked about so far, 
I don't want to go to that one. You should, okay? So when, when we look at this one, we had a lot of readings that we did, okay, uh, down here, and we should have notes on, on all those things so that we're, we're ready for the test on Tuesday, okay? These things won't be open during the test to read, but your notes definitely will, okay?